Hello, everybody. So the first uh, course I want to serve you is, uh, I don't know how to call it in English. It's called České buchty. <laughs> and that's actually, uh, although sweet, it's a substantial main course uh, in our tradition. Um, it's filled with uh, poppy seeds. Uh, the black stuffing you see, that's poppy seeds. Uh, all right. Uh, and since it's substantial course, it's our repository talk. Um, it's a repository for uh, language data, but also for other humanities data sets. Uh, we started as a repository only for language data, but uh, then with the Daria uh, contributions, uh, now we serve also other material. Uh, I'll start with the software side of the things. Uh, the system we run is called Clarin B Space. Uh, it's a GitHub project. You can, you can find it publicly available on this URL. And the system is now installed um, in approximately 15 places in 11 countries. And uh, um, most of the installation is so simple that people are able to do it themselves following documentation. But there's also a very good support channel on Clarin Slack, a channel called DSpace. You can find uh, somebody from all those uh, places that, that run these space, the Clarin DSpace there, and you can get good advice. Uh, um, the installation, some of the installations were done by, by our uh, colleagues who developed the system using client mobility grants. It usually takes about two to three days to get it all up and running uh, and you have a B-Center compliant repository. So it's kind of a low, uh, low entry, I would say. Um, there are some, some modifications by Polish and Norwegian teams, but since we are talking about uh, Lindas today, then I will not mention them because we are not uh, running those modifications. Uh, so that's, uh, yeah, um, the collaboration uh, is, um, I would say, very nice on the, on the support front, uh, but most of the development is still done by the Lindas team. And the big challenge uh, when we'll see the strength of the community is upcoming because uh, the DSpace system has, has just been updated to, to the completely new version 7 with new user interface and everything. And we'll have to substantially uh, update our, uh, our system to that, to that same code base. And now let me get to the repository from the user perspective, the software side uh, aside. This is what the repository looks like. It has a big search window with some, with some small uh, features around to see the newest records and, and to fine tune the search uh, that I'll mention later. Uh, the whole repository is um, kind of open access as much as possible. We use something called public license selector, which is another GitHub project that allows users to choose as open license as uh, possible without breaking law for their data set. Uh, we have uh, more than 500 registered users, which looks like a small number, but the registration is only required for specific things. So if you want to submit data, you have to register, or if you, want, if you need to sign a license for some restricted data set that, that actually requires license signing, then you also have to regist, um, register. And I will show later what, what that actually means. Um, we have... Uh, 200 plus data uh, records that contain data sets themselves. It's actually 400 plus now. And um, records are in many languages. And, and we have some number of metadata records. That's uh, heritage we are running for, from the early days of Clarin. Um, records that don't contain data sets themselves, but only on the descriptions. The whole repository is about 100, but 100 terabytes uh, in size. So it's not, it's not the too uh, hard to actually, actually run it, technically speaking. Um, this is what the repository looks like. As I said, big search window, then some facets to find in the search, um, and, uh, and so on. Um, it's, um, we try to have the repository for kind of a simple, uh, simplifying user's uh, life. So, uh, the main aspects are safe preservation. You just upload the data and you don't need to worry about it anymore. The data will be safely preserved and shared with everybody for reuse and so on. There's also very simply, uh, simple discovery, just like Google, you type what you're looking for and you quickly get to the results. Um, the system is uh, integrated with the 
the idea of direct data citations. I will mention it later, but those data citations only work, also work in Google Scholar. That is important because you kind of transparently get credit for the work that you have done. Um, and um, with licensing, as I mentioned before, you now with versioning, so when you have a new version of the same of the same data set, you can maybe see it on the right here where it says access to version two. That's a second version of some data set called access to. And um, it, overall, we try the repository to be very easy to use. There are some buzzwords and logos down here. So open access, I mentioned before, we're compliant with force 11 recommendation for data citations. The whole repository is compliant to with a, with a fair as specified, for instance, by the GoFair project. And uh, the data is integrated in open air. So whatever somebody submits here uh, is also visible as a result of, uh, of H2020 projects in, in the open air um, system for, uh, for managing the, the results of projects and, uh, and so on. So let me talk about the preservation a little bit. This is how it works. You just deposit uh, deposit the data by or you click click the, the, the highlighted deposit button, and you get this kind of a uh, guideline on on how to deposit. You just have to log in and start new submission, and you fill in a few fields in the metadata description. Basically, fill in a web form, drag and drop a data set, uh, then you select a license for that data set. You review the data uh, that you've filled in click a submit button, then it gets to a reviewer. And when a reviewer um, uh, verifies that, that it all looks correct, the data is published. Uh, the way you log in is probably familiar to everybody from Clarin. Um, we use a link to institution logins. Technically it's system is called SAML2. So basically it forwards you to your home institution. You log in at home to the institution that you already know and trust. And uh, the institution only sends us an information that the, the username, sometimes not even name, but number one, two, three, four, uh, has been verified. They have logged in and, and we certify that they are the real, the real user. So we don't have any, uh, any accounts really for, for, for anybody. Uh, this is what the, the search looks like. Uh, you just type a basic uh, search um, item here. And then you have these facets on the side that allow you to, um, to fine tune the search results. So you can say, I'm only looking for things in, uh, I don't know, in Arabic, and that I'm not, not looking for metadata files. I need, I need the real data, and it has to be open access or something like that, or from specific author or on specific subject. This is um, what I mentioned before, integration, good integration with Google. So you can see that this is a Google search for Prague Dependency 3 Bank 3.2, 3.0. And the third first two results are some web pages about the tree bank. And the third result that is highlighted down here, that is directly the data set in the repository. So this is, uh, this is the direct uh, search result from Google. Uh, we get actually most of the traffic through Google, so that this uh, this integration is uh, is crucial for the popularity of the repository. And this is the data citations that I mentioned before that work with Google Scholar. So you can see here that uh, in the repository on the page there is a kind of a highlighted box on top that tells you please use the following text to cite the item or you can export it in a predefined format like BibTeX for, for easy citation integration when you write a paper. So we encourage people to cite data directly as is recommended by, by many of those metrics I mentioned before. Uh, this is the licensing part when I said as open as possible, but not more. So this is integration of, uh, of so-called public license selector. And that's the component that allows uh, you to choose a proper license as open as, uh, as the data or software allows you to be. So it asks you a series of questions like, what is it you want to deposit? Is it software or is it data? And you answer and, and it kind of um, limits the possible, uh, the suitable licenses for you. And in the end, you end up with some list of recommendations uh, that is sorted by, by the openness. Um, this is a result of choosing a license. 
And this is a result where open access was not possible. This is what I want to show you because our repository system is one of the very few that I know about that allows you to use any license because we strongly believe that open access is great, but when it is not possible, it is still much better to publish a data set uh, with a limited, uh, sometimes even custom license than not publishing it at all. So that's why we want to, um, we went to great lengths to actually support any licensing conditions that really exist. So this is a data set that has a custom license written by the authors or lawyers of the authors of the corpus. It does require license signing, but the data can still be published and shared and, and reused and so on. This is the licensing framework, how it looks internally. So this is where you can define a new license as a manager of the repository system, can define a new license and provide its text and set the conditions of the license that for instance, any data set with this license does require or doesn't require users to log in and sign the license before they can download the data set and so on. So you kind of set the conditions and name the labels that are attached to the license and, and provide images for icons and so on that it's used easy for users to, um, to understand the licensing conditions. This is the versioning part when I mentioned uh, that uh, you can provide new versions of existing data sets. So this is a typical page you would get if you click at the link in some older paper. So there's an older paper that mentions data set a few years ago. You click a link in that, in that paper and you get to a page that looks like this. It describes the data set, but, but down below where you would expect the data to be actually available for download, it says the item has been replaced by a newer version. Uh, but if you really need this, this particular old version, for instance, for replication of results, then, then click here and you can still get it. And it lists all the possible versions. And this is what it looks like uh, when you are at the newest version of, uh, of a particular data set. Then it shows you the bitstream down there, right? The check more flags with the icon that's some zip archive, you can download it. But on the top, it says there are other versions available and you can list all these versions and choose uh, the older version again, if you need one. Typically users want the latest, but you can always get the original. And the repository is integrated with some, um, with quite a few things that I mentioned and some that I didn't. So Google, uh, including the Google Scholar and including Google Dataset Search that I didn't show. Uh, there's integration with open air, so reporting of, uh, of results of European projects. And again, kind of a search engine through which you can get to the repository. The same is true about Clarivate uh, Data Citation Index. Uh, our data sets are visible there and you can get to them directly from the index. Of course, we are integrated with Virtual Language Observatory and also Language Switchboard. I forgot to mention that one on the client side. Oh, yeah, the Switchboard is uh, for the services. Jan will talk about them later. That's why I didn't mention them. Um, uh, there is direct integration with some Lindat web applications that Jan will talk about. So you can search directly in the data sets. So there are data sets for download in the repository like Corpora but you can search inside the data sets uh, through some specialized services. And uh, there's this preservation, uh, preservation links to EU that where you can, where we can save uh, uh, copies of the data sets and so on. So to sum up um, what, I, what I wanted to say about the repository, I think it kind of nicely confirms to the FAIR requirements. All the data submitted to the repository is really well findable through various services, including the big search engines. It's accessible, the records are always there with data, even when the data set is, uh, is restricted. And uh, we try to be as open as possible. Um, then the data sets uh, are as interoperable as possible because we support any data formats that, that the community requires. And we went to some lengths to provide as much documentation as possible through, through direct document, direct um, descriptions inside the repository, but also through uploading, uploading longer descriptions, uh, PDFs or any other documentation uh, that goes next to the dataset itself. 
and um, and of course the reusability of data because of the of the direct citations and versioning uh, as I as I have shown you. So so we hope that that it works nicely, and there are some statistics that seem to support the idea that um, that people um, find the repository usable or or useful. Um, I hope you can you can see the graph well enough to see that the years uh, 2015, 16, 17, 18, and so on, the growing popularity of, of the repository until some, some half a million accesses uh, in year 2019 and slightly less in 2020. So um, this image uh, is one that I like because it shows that uh, the popularity is not, uh, not only local, so we get some 2.3% of uh, the visits in the repository from Czech Republic. And you can see that uh, you know, the darker the color, the, the more access uh, to the repository comes from there. And you can see that there is some shade of gray almost everywhere. It's very hard to find a country that would be really white uh, with, uh, with no access uh, to the repository. I think Greenland uh, and one or two countries in Africa but uh, but from most of the countries we have at least some at least some level of access and you can see that from some countries like iran we get quite a lot of access actually actually we have data sets submitted from iran uh, and i find that uh, nice uh, that's that's all i wanted to say about the repository